Hi, can you hear me well? Okay. Um, I hope that my English is good enough for the translation. And if you need any you know, clarification, let me know. Please raise your hand and I can come back to some point that um, may not be that clear. Um, I have my own Brazilian accent on my English. It's not my native language. Um, so I am currently the head of business development at BACT. And my presentation today is about tokenization in public chains. I think it's a great honor to be speaking about tokenization after such a great panel with um, so uh, important people. And I think I'm also very honored, very grateful to be here. Thanks, uh, Flip, for the invitation and congratulations on the organization. This is um, so inspiring to be in a or in an event that is so well organized. Um, this is just a small message. You can all read it. Um, it's a small disclaimer. I'm not offering any securities here. Um, we are very aware that we are doing uh, securities on chain, and my whole presentation is on an educational level. I want to be very clear about it. Um, just you know, introducing myself very quickly. I come from traditional finance. I had a small um, independent investment boutique in Brazil. Sold it in 2012, pre-crypto. Started doing some M&As in tech and got really interested in Bitcoin in 2013. Um, as you know, an individual investor and curious um, about it, sponsored the first Bitcoin conference in Brazil in 2014, um, invested in Ethereum in the crowd sale as well, um, and then uh, at, at some point decided to start working uh, full time in the space and been working full time in the space since 2017. Um, I, I was part of the team of the two first security token offerings in Brazil and, and I guess in Latin America in general, um, including, um, can, can I have some water please here? Yes. All right, I didn't see it, it was my blind spot. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, <clears throat> I helped BTG Pacto, the largest investment bank in the region, uh, with an offering of a real estate distress asset that they structured in 2018. Um, it was a very interesting project to, to help. Um, after that, I was um, invited to work with Mercado Bitcoin, the largest exchange in Brazil, created their international business development area. And a year ago, I joined the Backed Finance. I'm very happy to be leading um, business development backed. Um, so this is the slide that everybody knows. Um, why tokenization? I'm not gonna, you know, repeat uh, what everyone knows already. But I may wanna share um, my own perspective as a Brazilian investor. Um, I like to share this, this story um, around 2012, 2013. I was um, trying to invest uh, through AngelList, uh, you know, American startup platform um, in Brock Pierce Syndicate. And I had a very hard time to, to, to do it. I um, went to my bank account manager and told him that, hey, I want to do this investment in an American startup project. And he told me that I needed to fill a form for the Brazilian Central Bank and explain why do I want to send you know, $2,000 to an American LLC. And I needed to fill everything and so on. In the end, of course, I gave up. You know, I was just trying to make a small investment. The bureaucracy was really hard. And I guess that's you know, more than 10 years ago, but for many Brazilians and many people from Latin America or other emerging markets, it is still very hard to access international investments. Like this is still the case. 
Um, if I am a Brazilian you know, individual investor, I, I can be wealthy enough to invest in, in stocks abroad, but it's not easy. And starting from the language barrier, you know, a lot of Brazilians doesn't speak English very well, and um, it, it is a, a challenge. Um, with that said, I doubt that um, Latin American investors are, you know, um, not interested in investing in um, real estate development in Korea, for instance, or in Korean stocks, right? I, I think um, a lot of the, the emerging markets investors would like to invest um, in, in Asia and um, Europe and other um, developed countries that are not um, that easy to access um, from the traditional rails, right? Like we are um, in a market that the capital markets are still very segregated, very isolated from each other, very regional or very local. And this is still the case, right? And um, I think um, right now being the f very forefront of the development of the STO market, um, this is the main um, benefit or the main value proposition um, that is really um, being validated right now. It's not a promise anymore. Like this is something that is already here, and I'm going to talk more about it. Um, so to start, my focus on tokenization in public chains. I got this um, report on Dune Analytics from uh, 21 shares, and I think um, it's really clear that you know, the majority of what is happening now um, in RWAs on, on public chains are stable coins, and that's really the, you know, killer app or killer use on, on, on non-crypto native tokens, let's put it that way. Um, and then on, on the lower graph here, um, I took stable coins off, so this is the market share um, on all the other assets. So we have here um, equities, commodities, uh, loans, um, and government securities. Um, and specifically in government securities, we're talking about T-bills mainly, right? That's um, what has been tokenized in public chains um, more. Um, and that's uh, where we are right now at almost $2 billion, right? There's $2 billion of American U.S. T-bills uh, being traded in, in public chains right now. And I think that's um, showing us the direction of where the public chains negotiations are going, right? It's, uh, it started with stable coins, or so just digital dollar-backed tokens. Um, and then move it for, um, to securities on, on, on government securities, um, some commodities like uh, gold and, and oil, and then um, loans and, and stocks. Um, I personally am betting on, on stocks as the next um, sector that is going to grow more, and I'm going to talk more about it later. Um, I'm not a lawyer, and of course, this is no legal advice. Um, it's just um, my two cents on how to look at this from a regulatory perspective. I think um, that's you know where some of the STO players um, miscalculate or um, don't understand very well if they don't come from traditional markets, from capital markets. Um, there is a, 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 a few um, comments that I want to share about. Um, you should be concerned um, both on the counter of issuance of your project, um, but also on the country that you are doing the offering of the securities. And I think that's the most challenging part, um, to understand where is your investor's base and what is the regulation on their local jurisdiction. And I think this needs to be done um, by different players. So what I saw 
um, in 2017, 2018, in the beginning of the security token uh, market, uh, was many players trying to do everything, trying to be um, the issuer, the tokenizer, and then um, the seller, the distributor, or um, secondary market, and you know, creating the whole um, vertical. There are still many players doing that. Um, I think there is a reason why the capital market has um, different um, type of players and you know Chinese walls and uh, specific um, business models and, and value propositions for each player. And I think this needs to, at some point or at, uh, at some level, needs to be uh, thought about when you're doing a tokenized version of a security. I don't think this changes a lot. Um, so in our sense, um, BACT is a company um, focused on issuance. Uh, we are, I'm going to share a little bit more about BACT, but we are really focused on issuance and um, we're not that uh, oriented to retail. We focus mostly on um, professional qualified investors and partners that are licensed to then offer our securities to retail. And because of that, we can actually deliver very solid security tokens uh, on chain uh, with a robust, compliant, and safe um, investors protection. Right, so, um, and I think um, it's because we're focusing on, on the first item here on, on the list. Um, there is also the whole discussion around uh, permissioned or centralized uh, chains and infrastructure versus permissionless and more public distributed um, infrastructure. Um, we are betting a lot on the permissionless, um, so we try to have um, tokenized assets or digital securities that are freely transferable, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as well. And I think uh, one big question to you know give two cents as well is to think about um, if you're doing an STO or if you're working in the space, uh, where is really the target audience? Is it a more professional? Um, institutional investor focus, or is it more retail? Because this changes a lot, right? And I think this, it's very important to have it clear. Um, so, two cents about BACT. We are um, founded in 2021. We are licensed um, in the Jersey Islands, and our headquarters are in Switzerland. Right now, we traded more than $100 million in 17 products. And I really want to focus a little bit on, on our regulatory approach, because I think this is very insightful for other players. And even maybe you know, sharing uh, our perspective from our Europe central uh, focus um, to Korea and Asia in general. Uh, we have our headquarters in Switzerland. We follow the DLT Act. It's the blockchain law in Switzerland. And we also have a subsidiary in the Jersey Islands, um, which is very complementary. And in the Jersey Islands, we have the first license from the Jersey Authority to issue securities in token forms, in, in digital forms. Um, we also do have a prospectus in Liechtenstein for all of our 17 tokens. And that means that our tokens are um, compliant with um, the European Union regulation, uh, MIFID II. Um, so they are retail graded. Um, they, they can be sold and, and held by retail investors. There is um, you know, no difference from a traditional security traded in uh, you know, any exchange in Europe, um, held in banks, in, in brokers. Um, and our tokenized securities. They are the same uh, under the European law for, for the purpose of retail investors. There's the whole uh, risk um, uh, prospectus and factors on, on our website. It's everything is public there. And because of that, 
we are actually able to create tokens that are freely transferable. There are, for those that are technical in, in, in blockchain, there are ERC-20 tokens. Um, there is no need of KYC or any kind of control or address control or whitelisting control on the token level. We'll do that on uh, um, uh, issuance level and we have a very solid compliance to be able to do that. Um, but once our direct clients buys our tokens, they can resell, they can transfer these tokens um, to other uh, clients or um, uh, people that they sell or they transfer, they want to transfer the tokens to. Um, so they are actually a kind of quote unquote uh, bare asset on chain. Um, that's because we, we work very closely with the regulators and uh, with the, the law that is really clear on, on Switzerland and the Jersey Islands uh, that allow us to, to have securities on chain that are freely transferable. Um, of course, there are some caveats. Um, we don't sell to as investors and our clients also don't trade, don't sell to as investors. We, are, we uh, so far we are um, maintaining some distance until we have more clarity on the, on the SEC point of view um, about that. Um, right now, these are just a few exam examples of the tokens that we have live and trading. Um, happy to share um, that any professional qualified investors can onboard with us and buy directly on our platform and do, um, you know, hold and do their own custody or retail investors right now, they can come to some of our clients, partners, um, like uh, Inor Securities that is here with us, Rodrigo, and with INX that I'm pretty sure that all of you are familiar already. Um, we are also um, DeFi friendly because the tokens are freely transferable and simple ERC-20, like most of you know, um, Ethereum-based tokens, uh, they can be integrated with DeFi protocols. So on the top right, I have um, a screenshot of uh, Morpho. It's a lending protocol where users can deposit TBUs, for instance, our TBUs, and borrow stable coins against it. And this is something new in the market. Uh, it's still beginning, um, it's still you know, um, in its infancy. Um, but I think it changes a lot on the perspective, from an investor's perspective, um, to have in a base layer, um, a traditional base, uh, risk-free, quote unquote, um, US Treasury return or yield, um, you know, below everything else you do, you can have your TBU rate free um, as the base yield for your whole crypto portfolio. And then if you wanna have crypto exposure, you can borrow stable coins, do whatever trading you wanna do with those stable coins. And then if you wanna de-risk again, you can just come back to your TBUs and you're holding uh, a token that is actually um, a, a claimable against TBUs on, on a Swiss bank. So um, I think it's, it, it changes the perspective from a risk perspective from a crypto investor or a blockchain investor. We are issuing on, on you know, mainly EVM chains right now, uh, open to, to work with more chains as well. Yesterday I saw Cantal Network was very curious about it, so may want to speak with uh, Ryan if he's here today. Um, we work with you know, Chainlink on guaranteeing that there is a, le uh, a link uh, between the on-chain um, data and the off-chain data. So we have uh, oracles uh, in real time with Chainlink and also proof of reserve in real time with Chainlink um, that, you know, help our investors to feel comfortable um, that there is always uh, one asset on the collateral in the banks for each token that is issued on, on chain. Um, yeah, I um, wanna be very quick here to mention that we're bankruptcy remote. Um, we have you know, a whole 
uh, compliance and governance approach to that. Don't want to be very uh, detailed here, but it's really interesting um, comparing to other solutions out there. I think we have um, you know, a very um, vanguard way of guaranteeing that there's um, guarantee that there's, that, that there's access or ownership of the collaterals for any investors um, that invest in our tokens, including a regulated player in Switzerland that can um, have, that has writing access to our bank accounts and can seize uh, collateral to send directly to token holders in case of liquidity events and so on. Um, this is just our uh, volume so far. Um, some of the partners that we've been working with and more recently, we started to leverage on our um, expertise and our muscle built around the tokens that we created for ourselves. And we are issuing tokens for clients as well. So we are offering um, tokenization as a service. And this is a very comprehensive service that we started to do, leverage on our, our technology, our licenses, our regulatory approach and, and knowledge. And that's it. I'm open for questions. If you have any, also interested in connecting, understanding more on the local uh, market, how um, things are evolving here, and if there is any business opportunity, I'm always you know, open to collaborate. Do we have a microphone for questions, if we do have any? or? Can we facilitate that in some way? 네, 현장에서 질문 있으신 분들은 손 들어 주시면 저희 추가 질문도 받아보도록 하겠습니다. 질문 있으시면은 손 들어 주시면 저희가 마이크 전달해 드릴게요. So I guess I'll be a very efficient Brazilian and end my presentation two minutes earlier. 네, 추가 질문 없으시면 저희 여기에서 마무리 짓도록 하겠습니다. 여러분 다시 한번 대표님 큰 박수 보내주시면 감사하겠습니다. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.